Hello, everybody. Another edition of a Wired Wednesday. As we sit here, it is 345 before a 640 first pitch, so about three hours before game time here tonight. We're very happy to be joined by one of the longest tenured Marlins, our good buddy John Birdie. John, how you doing today? I'm good. That's still getting used to hearing that. You know, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Feels like time's flying by, but all's good. That's right. You fortunately you're not old and gray though, so that's good. No, you're still no. young and spry and quick yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. We love doing this because it's a great reminder uh, to some fans out there that players for a 6:40 first pitch do not show up at 6:30 and just roll the balls <laughs> out and go play. What time do you get to the ballpark for a typical night game? For a typical night home game, I'm usually here probably right around 12:30. So about six hours before the game. <laughs> all right. So the minute you walk in the door, what are you doing for six hours? Uh, start by eating lunch usually. Usually they have a nice spread for us, so let's uh, do that. And then I usually go into the training room and get done whatever treatment or different things to stay on top of uh, my, my health and soft tissue work. Um, after that, go to the gym, get loose, um, work out if I have a workout that day. Um, from there, head to the cage, get my swings in, um, do my pregame routine type stuff. Um, after that, probably any early infield work if needed or early hitting on the field. And then uh, kind of come out here for BP. So that's where we're at right now. For crying out loud, John, that is a lot of work. I mean, when do you <laughs> eat? I mean, when yeah. do you get a shake? Do you get a candy bar? Do you get anything? Uh, yeah, in between there, you know, I get some snacks and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Hey, how much fun are you having this year? I mean, obviously the team's in a pennant race. I mean, it's going down to the final month. Uh, how energized are you as a player of uh, being in this situation? Ah, it's just it's so much more fun, obviously, playing these meaningful games here in September. But it's just been a great group of guys. So um, we've just been having fun coming to the yard every day and makes uh, the long days a lot feel a lot shorter and um, a lot more fun. Now, as we mentioned earlier, being one of the longest tenured Marlins, that has also meant, uh, if we're being honest, a few lean years around these parts. But 2020 was an awful lot of fun. And as we enter September in 2023, how does it compare to entering September in 2020 when you guys were in it in that uh, shortened year? So, um, obviously, that was a lot of fun, but uh, we kind of were missing out on the fans, you know. So, it'd be a lot more fun this year getting, getting to the playoffs and being able to uh, experience what that's like in front of a uh, sellout crowds and stuff like that. So um, similar, though, in the sense of we know what we're playing for and we know what we got to do. But um, like 2020, this year is pretty similar. Just having fun with the guys. And of course, the trade deadline this year was a little bit different in uh, in those aforementioned lean years. Sometimes you see guys in the clubhouse going elsewhere to join a contender. But this year you guys were adding what did that do to the mindset, to the energy of the clubhouse? Yeah, obviously um, gained a couple of really good uh, hitters there for us that have been playing really well with uh, Bell and Berger, and uh, it helps that they're great guys, so they fit right in right away. And um, to be able to have them and add uh, Robertson and um, guys like that has been, uh, it's been great for us. You know, John, let's talk about uh, your youth uh, growing up in uh, in Troy, Michigan, for just a moment. It's been well documented that you played some hockey. Uh, did yep, you play yep. any other sports growing up, and when did you really start honing in on baseball as a career? Um, so baseball was always my first love. It was the first sport I played, um, but hockey was kind of my number two sport, and I loved it and had a great time doing it. But uh, I played basketball and football as well as hockey and baseball in middle school, and then when I got to high school just for time commitments, I narrowed it down to baseball and hockey. And then right before my senior year um, in high school, just decided of picking one one sport to really focus on and and try to make it to the college level and then to the professional level. How much did those other sports uh, when you were growing up, those motor skills, uh, how much did it help you in developing uh, some of the skills you have now. A lot of people don't realize or, or believe me, but I was actually a hockey goalie. Oh, no way. Up, so uh, <laughs> the quickness, the reaction time and all that kind of helped uh, help transition into baseball, too. We'd believe it. We've seen some of the plays you've made this year at shortstop or third base. <laughs> Maybe a little more self-defense. That's why than none get through. That's why none get through the five hole. Yeah, the, the one that came to mind was off uh, Vladdy Jr. I was playing third earlier this year at home, and I think he had a ball 114 or something at me. So I uh, kind of glove saved it and 
got the out at second. So who do you fear when you are playing third base in the league of big right handers when they come up that you want to back up a couple of steps. Um, yeah I mean Vladdy Jr. being one of them uh, Aaron Judge Stanton guys <laughs> like that um, the tough ones though sometimes are the guys who can bunt too though so you can't really take too much uh, too many steps back and uh, but they also have the ability of driving the ball down your throat so <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're taking ground balls at shortstop right now but you have become an invaluable member of this organization the last few years for being able to play hey, all up. over the place why are you taking ground balls at shortstop today um, just you know yesterday I took them at third so today taking them at short been playing a lot more short this year um, especially against left-handed pitchers so just try to stay fresh here um, and yeah on, on non-start days kind of just move around as best I can just to stay fresh everywhere one of the things I've noticed about your team is that you guys uh, place a huge emphasis on defense. I mean, every day you guys are out there taking ground balls, even on days when you go hit, you guys still take ground balls and you even take ground balls early on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a, a point of emphasis for us this year. And we know with uh, the type of team we have, um, obviously the offense is coming around and we're scoring more runs. But with the great pitching we have, we want to be able to uh, play good defense behind them. and. Um, helps us win a lot of those close ball games. All right, Lone Depot Park aside, is there a favorite infield that's got just the right bounce, true hops, all kinds of stuff? A favorite infield that you've played? That's a great question. Lone Depot is by far my favorite. Wow. I just uh, the way they take care of the dirt here, and um, trying to think of other places that are similar. Um, I thought uh, LA was pretty good. Dodgers, Dodger Stadium. Um, I like places that kind of have not as thick of grass, actually. Um, sometimes uh, some of the places that have some thicker grass, it knocks the ball down, which is nice, but the spin and hops are a little bit different. I see you at the uh, the back of the uh, of the infield there. Do you have to always be cautious of where you are standing not to be on the grass? Because I guess that's uh, not allowed anymore. And also, when you're over up the middle, do you find yourself sometimes on the other side by accident? Um, so. At shortstop and third base, I really haven't had any issue because um, I kind of rely more on my quickness anyways uh, to make up for for some arm strength um, when I'm on the left side of the field. But it's more playing second base. I didn't really realize how how often I was started in the grass just because I wanted to gain more range over there. So that's kind of where it's been a I kind of peek back and check every every few pitches or so just to make sure I'm not starting starting in the grass there. One thing uh, in, in this day and age of baseball, we always see infielders and outfielders uh, looking at a card. I'm not asking you exactly what's on the card necessarily, but what sort of information are you guys always peeking at in between pitches or in between hitters? Yeah, it's just um, a starting point uh, based on our analytics that we have of kind of where we want to play certain guys. And they give us the luxury, though, and the freedom to um, kind of move off those spots a little bit depending on what we see um, if a guy looks like he's maybe pulling the ball a little more to, to take a step with him or 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 whatever it may be are you someone who always had a pretty good feel for where to play a certain hitter and how has maybe the the use of these cards or the the emphasis on analytics how long did it take you to get comfortable with that kind of stuff um, rookie year I think was was a little different obviously um, but since after that I think I've gotten pretty comfortable with it and I think the the older I've gotten the better I've gotten at kind of just getting a feel for certain players playing against them more or having a certain feel based on what I see from their swing um, so I feel like every year I get a little better with it talk about swings for a moment are you one that kind of reads swings when guys up are out there and posed to, to the pitchers that's out there what they might do with a certain pitch and do you cheat one way or another when you know a breaking ball is coming yeah so um, it depends on if our pitchers hitting his spots on, on that day and usually our guys are so that helps and then based on um, pitches you know pitch sequences and guys swings and stuff you might cheat over a little bit you know if um, Certain guys, you know, Sandy's running a sinker in. The best thing they're going to probably be able to do with it is pull it on the ground. So, kind of maybe cheat a little step, step or two into the hole. 
Uh, we uh, came on talking about how you were one of the longest tenured Marlins, the longest tenured Marlin, the Sandy Alcantara. Uh, and as we sit here right now, we learned some news today that he's going on the IL. From your perspective, having played with him, played behind him, what has he meant to this club uh, over the course of the last few years? I mean, he's been he's been everything and more that that we could ever ask out of a out of an ace, out of our workhorse and. Just every time he gets the ball, he wants to throw all nine innings. And if we're playing 10 that day, he wants to pitch the 10s too. So um, obviously we hope it's just something small going on and and go from there because we're going to definitely, definitely miss a guy like that. What's the mentality of, of the club when you hear some news like like Sandy and also Solaire uh, going on the injured list? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's never ideal. Uh, two big parts of our team, but We've dealt with certain things like this throughout the whole entire year, so it's just business as usual and kind of that next man up mentality that um, we're filling in and and uh, try to weather the storm while they're gone and continue to push. All right, getting back to uh, to your youth, let me ask one more question about young John Birdie, like really young John Birdie, like getting <laughs> dropped off at the Little League field, John Birdie. <laughs> what position were you? Were you always a shortstop? Yeah, I grew up a shortstop. That was my main spot, but. Uh, as I got older, um, just try to tinker at different spots, different positions. But yeah, I was always a shortstop growing up. And other than being a huge Rod Allen fan, watching all those <laughs> Tigers games, uh, who who did you look up to as a youngster? Uh, big Ken Griffey Jr. fan, Chipper Jones, um, guys like that. You know, you had a chance to face a Verlander here just uh, a few weeks ago. I mean, what is it like facing someone like Verlander when when you grew up in Detroit? He was I mean, pitching, you probably were in high school at that time. Sorry, I had to get that out real quick. Nice play. <laughs> nice play. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, obviously, he's had such an amazing career and still doing it at such a high level. Um, pretty special to, uh, you know, in the moment, not thinking too much about it, but I'm sure I'll look back uh, when I'm done playing and, and realize how cool it really was. You get an autograph? Jersey no, from Verlander? No, I didn't. No, no? I didn't. I'm terrible with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start collecting a few of those balls. Hey, I yeah. got one more question about PitchCom. Uh, a little birdie told me that no longer do you guys have to get a sign from the pitcher or the catcher when you guys want to pick at second base. There's simply something on the PitchCom that tells you in your ear a pick play. Is that true? Uh, yeah, we still have other ways to to do it. Um, that doesn't have to come from the PitchCom, but um, there is one of those options, yes. The pitch count could actually tell you we want to pick here. Oh. Will it tell you shortstop in second base or what? Um, it'll, it's usually, you know, if we, it, we know who's covering, so it's based on kind of coverage. So um, the catcher will kind of put it on and we know who's, who's got coverage there and, and what kind of play we're running and, and go from there. All right, so you've just taken your ground balls. Ooh. You are thoroughly out of breath. You did a <laughs> wonderful job answering some questions here. What's next on the uh, the pregame schedule? Before I go in, I know you're having a hard time with the crosswords. I think you're you finishing it and putting it uh, on your Joe, line. yeah, I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's always got something for me if I'm mic'd up. Uh, <laughs> next is uh, we're hitting BP, so I'll probably shag for group one, maybe get some reps in the outfield. Um, I think I'm hitting group two. What's up, stud? That's my guy, Louie. Um, and then uh, hit BP, go in, grab a pregame meal, kind of relax for a few minutes and get ready for our 640 game. What What is the pregame meal? Uh, mine is usually a very heavy chicken parm kind of thing <laughs> with some candy and things like that. I'm be, guessing yours is different. Be tough to run around with that, with that <laughs> in my stomach, even though it sounds fantastic. I'll save that for postgame. Um, Lately, I mean, our chefs have been doing a great job, but lately they've been making this uh, kind of crunch wrap. Ooh, it's been fantastic. So Ooh. it's kind of been a go-to for a few days. I try not to do it every day, but it's uh, it's really good. I have a serious question for you. Paul's been asking all the serious questions, but I have <laughs> one now. Hey, stolen bases. Yeah. Obviously, 41 last year. Not nearly running as much this year as uh -huh. last year. Is there more emphasis being played to you? Is it? Guys are more quicker when you get on first base. What's going on? I think it's been a combination. What's up, Rex? Um, it's been a combination of a lot of things. Um, earlier in the year, I kind of had a few minor, minor issues going on with my legs where I just felt like I couldn't, couldn't run as fast as I wanted to. Um, but that's been all taken care of and good, and legs are feeling good now. But 
it seems like sometimes I get on base and we're down by four or we're up by four or five and it's just not a good spot to to do it or pitcher's been really quick they're you know a one 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 two to the plate where it's just not worth the risk to to try to take it in that situation so it's been a little bit of everything but um, legs are feeling good and so obviously the situation arises I'll be uh, be on my way. What did you did you get uh, a, a plaque or a trophy or something for leading baseball and stolen bases. Um, so the Marlins gave me a uh, golden base for it. It was pretty cool. Nice. Um, presented it to me earlier in the year. Um, I guess for the National League it's the Lou Brock Award but they stopped like making it or giving it out or something so I don't know. But uh, the Marlins made a, a golden base. What's up, D. Ref? Did you get and, the uh, uh, the big base or the little base? It was, oh, it was, it was uh, that's a good question. It's a little base, but I mean, it's it's still big. But yeah, it's it's the old it's the it's the old one. Yeah, yeah, the 2020 model. Right, the small box of pizza, not the large. <laughs> exactly. Um, the other thing we've often wondered: if you had to guess, do you lead the team in different gloves? Um, so. I actually only use two gloves. I have two gamers currently. Okay. I have an outfield glove and an infield glove because I tried using a bigger glove at third base earlier in my career and I just didn't didn't feel comfortable with it. So I use the same same glove um, at short, second, and third. And then I have my one outfield glove. So I have a handful of gloves that I break in. I do have a first base glove in case I need it, um, but I haven't needed it just yet. So. When you're playing left field, I, I've seen this a lot with a bunch of different left fielders. Is there a, there a, a tricky height on line drives with either a ribbon board or the lights? Yes. So okay. here, um, every park's a little different, but here there is only on the corners, just based on where the lights are. Um, kind of that medium hit line drive that's kind of higher, but not quite as high as a normal pop-up um, can get in there for for a second or two so um, you got to hang with it and just know know on the corners left field and right field that it can happen center field are usually good so and I, I bring that up because sometimes people would accuse a broadcaster of just covering for a player but there's actually a little <laughs> no issue uh, there every okay. every stadium has it um, usually I feel like I could be wrong but usually I feel like in domes um, it's usually a little lower um, than in some of the outdoor stadiums um, so it's usually a similar similar location of a of a line drive fly ball type thing but um, it does differ from field to field all right you've passed the first test um, <laughs> how about you take a little break catch your breath and uh, we'll chat again when you're in the cage we'll talk a little bit about hitting and pregame hitting routines too Sounds that work? Good. yeah okay appreciate Very it good. yep all right, welcome back. Phase two of our Wired Wednesday with John Birdie. He's going to be in the cage right now. All right, so different rounds, John. What is that first round? What are you working on? First round, usually it's kind of just trying to shoot him the other way, kind of line drive to, to right, get a feel for, for where I'm at with my swing, and um, kind of work from there. Are these the first swings that you have taken today, have, or have you already been in the cage? No, nah, yeah, I've been in the, in the cage quite a bit. Uh, I just did my normal routine in the cage, which um, is T work um, and front toss. So probably taking at least 50 swings already, maybe. Well, that's another message for the kids who, uh, you know, like my own son, who figures, well, I, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to hit off a tee. But even <laughs> the big leaguers continue to hit off tees. No, what you, do you get from that every day? The day you think you have it figured out is the day you, you have no clue. So <laughs> you, you, you never have it figured out. Uh, T works just a lot of um, usually for me it's just for a lot for balance where I can I can work on my move and my my load um, without the ball moving and challenge myself oh my God. Yeah, that way. Man, um, I think Pipe almost got drilled, so he that's sure good. Did. Um, I think he's all right though. So uh, yeah, so that's usually what I used to do for. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Yeah, I saw that. Wow. Nice work dealing with chaos. That's <laughs> yeah, good. My goodness. Steady Eddie over there. Uh, and then the friend in terms of the uh, the front toss. Well, you're going to hit now. Yeah, All right. Yeah, so yeah, let's yeah, shoot yeah. it the other way. It's going to be. Yeah. Let's see how good I can do today. <laughs> Get choke my butts up. down first. You choke up when you're swinging? Uh, two strikes. Two strikes I choke up. So I'll work on it every now and then, too, in the cage. Oh, not a good start. Have you always had that two strike approach? There we go. Yeah, I like to shorten up just to have uh, more contact, obviously. Um, 
So in a day and age where maybe overall strikeouts are up and guys don't <laughs> mind striking out, do you still hate it? Oh, coming out. Hold on one second. I'm talking to him. I'm getting yelled at by the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's right there. Uh, sorry, what was the question? No, it said in a day and age now in baseball where strikeouts are up and it seems like guys don't mind striking out. Where, where do you stand on striking out? Maybe not so much right. in a big spot, but overall. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, especially a guy like myself who can run. I'm just uh, with two strikes trying to put the ball in play, trying to move it forward and um, use my legs and hopefully good things happen. And by the way, those swings that you were taking were not your fault. Rob Flippo looked like he was throwing some nasty, <laughs> nasty cutters up here. I figured, no it, one out. Could I hit figured those. it out. It's all right. <laughs> First round, it's okay. Uh, other than uh, Brant Brown affecting uh, how we do our jobs right now, <laughs> uh, what's it been like working with this new hitting group this year? Uh, it's been great. Um, the amount of information and good information we have in, in our scouting reports and that go into, you know, how we're going to attack pitchers um, that night has been phenomenal. And then just mechanically and, and things like that, just uh, cleaning a few things up. And um, it's been awesome. How fun has the game been for you this year, John? Because obviously there's more hitting and running this year. There's more guys that are running at certain times. And there's guys that are bunting with runners on third, less than two outs. It's kind of the small ball game. Have you enjoyed that part of the game coming yeah. back? Yeah, I definitely have um, kind of. Going back to a little bit of kind of how baseball was played and you know in the 90s and stuff when I was growing up watching it. Um, so that's been pretty awesome where teams you know home runs are fun but not really trying to rely on on the three run homer and um, just trying to manufacture runs in any way you can. Well you, you mentioned old school but how about new school same thing I asked you defensively in terms of working with analytics and stuff like that uh, from an offensive perspective how have you adjusted to that the last few years. Yeah. Um, you know just from an analytic standpoint just understanding kind of pitchers and what they're trying to do and what their pitches are doing um, that can and, and we can kind of come up with a plan and approach to to counter what they're doing and, and put ourselves in the best position to to be successful on a given night. You know there's a lot of hitters out there that go to places like driveline for instance. Have you ever gone to any of those kind of places or tried to no. uh, do anything like that. No I know a lot of guys do but. Um, you know, I trust trust my coaches, what they see, trust what I feel, and um, kind of have built my swing off that. And always looking to get better, but uh, just for whatever reason, haven't uh, made my way to to a place like that. So, getting ready for round two of batting practice, how does this one differ? Um, probably pretty similar to the first round, but maybe might sight my sights a little bit more to right center. Um, we'll see, just depending on how how I'm feeling and how the ball's playing and. Um, you know, kind of just trying my best just to have the ho uh, the Luis Arise approach of spraying the ball and kind of being surgical with it. When's the home run round? That used to be my favorite <laughs> round. <of the day. laughs> uh, maybe if I'm feeling good enough, the last round I might try just to work on it a little bit. But uh, that usually doesn't doesn't come into play for me too much. When you get overplayed, as far as the shift is concerned, let's say the second baseman is kind of playing up the middle, will you look to shoot the ball in that hole, or are you just kind of like? pick and choose when you want to hit the ball in certain directions. Yeah I mean if it, they're giving it to me over there and, and the pitcher kind of matches up well for it I'll definitely definitely try to use that hole as best I can and I think I've gotten pretty good at it throughout my career of, of just taking the knock the other way and um, you know like I said being a speed guy is just trying to get on base and put pressure on the defense and allow the, the big boys to drive me in. I know you guys uh, have struggled a little bit coming out of the break out of the break you guys aren't struggling now but the first half of the season you guys are on point as far as your two strike hitting you would extend innings what was the difference and what was that message that allowed you guys to have that confidence with two strikes and two outs to extend innings yeah just trying to push the ball forward and um, obviously you go through lulls throughout the year and unfortunately we had one but um, you know finding our feel and our rhythm again. Right, we'll let you hit this round and bug you in a second. <laughs> it's 
a little easier to hit when you're not talking, I guess. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Don't blame that on us. We didn't say anything. Brownie said whoever was telling me how to hit that round was better than the first round, but no one was talking, so I guess that, <laughs> that tells you right there. Now you guys are having a lot of fun right now, and that's key. I mean, the smiles, I mean, the excitement in that dugout last night, it, it, it must have... You guys must have had a lot of fun last night. Yeah, uh, obviously we're going up against a really, really good team, but to get to where we want to go and the team we want to be, these are the kinds of teams we have to beat, you know. And so uh, played them tough um, on the road in, in L.A. and could have taken maybe two or three, um, you know, but unfortunately we didn't. Uh, so just trying to trying to stay fun, stay loose, have fun, and um, try to take game two tonight. Uh, you mentioned Luis Arise a few minutes ago, being able to be around him um, on and off the field, but watching how he goes about his business, what's impressed you the most? Uh, yeah, I mean, everything. He's just, first and foremost, a great teammate and keeps things loose and fun. And, um, you know, I've talked about his batting practice before and in, in other interviews, how impressive that is. But it's been pretty crazy how many times he's come up to me or, or someone else and kind of told us what he was going to do next so it's, <laughs> and actually doing it we we're in um washington might have been game one or two he started off 0 for one and he he said he came in he said you know what i usually don't swing at the first pitch and get out like that i said that's okay he said i got four more hits today maybe three maybe four and he ended up with four i think he went four for five he went four for his next four and it's like what? <laughs> it's just that easy, huh? I guess I just got to start telling people I'm going to go four for four today. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, last one, John, and we'll let you go after this. Um, uh, of course, hopefully you've got many more years in the big leagues uh, in front of you. Yep. But after baseball, what, what do you think you might be up to? Um, that's a great question. Um, probably finish my degree first. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to want to try the coaching route, whether at the professional level or the college level. I just feel like I've played this game long enough to have a lot of knowledge with it and always learning, but uh, I feel like I, I, I might enjoy giving back and, and teaching a younger group, but um, and try that route first and, and see how it goes. A degree in what? Uh, finance, so. Smart. Take yeah. care of that money, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <That's> good. <laughs> uh, John, great talking to you today. Sorry for getting in the way, but no uh, glad you got no your worries. work in. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. All right, good luck tonight. Appreciate All right, it, buddy.